Hey guys, welcome to our redeemed life. And I would, um, I'm just sitting here today with a friend that is a fellow homeschool mom. And I wanted to just ask her some questions. I know I get a lot of questions about how to homeschool. Um, a lot of us are in very different places in life. Some of us have big families. Some of us have little ones. I was a single mom doing uh, a homeschooling my kids. And so Kathy here is um, a mom of eight and i think she you homeschooled six of six. them right mm -hmm. so um that's just going to give you a little bit different perspective over you know how different families do it and hopefully this encourages you if it does share like subscribe i would love for you to share it to a friend or anybody who's thinking about homeschooling or is in the thick of it and maybe wanting to give up because they just <laughs> don't know if it'll ever end it is such a blessing to be able to um raise up your children at home. Mm -hmm. And so these videos are just as an encouragement to help you keep going, help you see the light of just moving forward and getting through the tough times and that it looks different for everyone. So things that I might have done, um, she might not have done and things that she did, I, I didn't do. So this is um, hopefully going to bless you and um, welcome, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> She's yeah. a really good friend and our, our kids grew up together. Yes. So to say that kids are not... Uh, socialized is a bunch of baloney because yeah. our kids had lots of kids to play with mm -hmm. so um yeah so where did your when did you and your husband decide to homeschool um we decided to homeschool really relatively early on um when we really had our first child we decided to homeschool um my husband had two children from a previous marriage and they went to you know traditional public school but when we had Kelly, um, John's older sister, Michelle, had homeschooled her six children. And so he didn't know how it would all work, but he was definitely on board with it. So we decided from the early, early on that we were going to do that. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. So when did you, because you, you, after Kelly, you started mm -hmm. having, you had kids kind of boom, boom, boom. Right? Yeah. Every 18 so, months. Right. So we had... <laughs> This is a warrior mom. <laughs> Every 18 months. Yeah. I can't imagine. June and December birthdays, basically. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, so when you, what age did you start homeschooling and what did that look like when you first started? Yeah, that, that really varied depending on the child. But Kelly, with our first, um, we really started homeschooling her. I guess the way that we viewed it is the minute you become a parent, you're homeschooling. Right. Cause, because your yeah. children are learning things. They're Absolutely. learning about family dynamics. They're learning about, um, you know, how to relate to the parents, other people, the siblings. So we always had that view. And I guess around three is when we started doing some things with Kelly. We always did lots of reading. When the kids were little, really tiny, I mean, even infants, we had little board books that they look would look right. at right. with pictures. And so... We always read to them a lot from very from early on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, you know, when around three, we just started making the sounds of the letters and pointing it out as we read the books. And right. Uh, so that's kind of when we started with everybody, but not everybody took to it right away. Uh, yeah. We have a couple of kids that are more visual learners and active kinesthetic learners, you know, hands on. And so... Yeah, they listened to you read while they did lots of things. <laughs> right, right. They wouldn't sit there with the book with you. So um, we really tailored it to the child. I, I think our the oldest one of our children began to read was about eight. Okay. And we didn't push it. Yeah, yeah I know that um, um, with my kids too, when you think that they're not listening, like whether you're reading to one other child, they could be like two or three years old, but they are absorbing all that information even though you're not specifically doing a lesson with them. So, so true. My um, daughter, one of my daughters, <laughs> we had taught her like the initial phonics, but mm -hmm. we hadn't taught her long vowel sounds or anything. Yeah. And then um, I had another baby by then, and so she wasn't getting a lot of time. And all of a sudden I heard her on the couch, and she was reading like a full, <laughs> full on, all sound. I'm like, oh, wait, when did you learn that? She's like, I don't know. That is amazing. That's like just, 
<laughs> how being in being so, uh, exposed to things can help you learn, um, even though you're not getting direct instruction. That's mm -hmm. pretty amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. Which a lot of homeschool parents, I think, experience because, um, you know, you can't sit down with every single one of them, especially more. I mean, it, it's hard to have very specific time. I kind of did group lessons um, of the varied ages, but um, they're always learning. They're always listening. The, you know, if you ever think your kids aren't listening, you're crazy because they are. So in good and good and bad ways, right? And they point that out as they get older. Right. They, they show you that they've been listening and oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. They remember everything that you've said and are that's you know true. not doing perfectly. So. That's absolutely true. Yeah, that's another video for teen teen yeah. uh, mamas of teens yeah. for sure. Um, so, what? would you say was one of the biggest struggles? Um, Cause we all face struggles homeschooling, even though it's wonderful, it's not lack of struggles, just like having kids in school is not lack of struggles. They're just different. Um, what would you say one of the hardest things is that you experienced either homeschooling itself or homeschooling that many kids or, mm -hmm. um, or homeschooling with toddlers, you know, mm -hmm. like what was your biggest struggle? Honestly, my biggest struggle personally was being okay with a very lived in house. Mm, yeah. Oh my gosh. Always yeah. feeling like things weren't done because we lived here. <laughs> this was right. the this was the epicenter of everything. Right. For us. And so there was always more laundry to be done. There was always, you know, snacks that needed to be put away because snack time was over. Right. There was um and and so it was more just learning to enjoy actually living and doing life together right mm -hmm. yeah because there's stacks of books unless you have like a specific yes. room for homeschooling which i did not have um there's stacks of books there's papers there's all their mm -hmm. gear and some people put in lockers some people <laughs> you know I had a specific spot uh, when they were teenagers. I just had them take it to their room. Like, you take all your books to your room because mm -hmm. I'm tired of looking at them. But, <laughs> um, yeah, that's hard to, like, just be comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. And that's different for everyone. Some people have the space to organize it and mm -hmm. put it away, and some people don't. So mm -hmm. I know that I didn't. Well, and it always seemed like we had a game room that we set up as our classroom. But to be perfectly honest, my kids never really loved learning there. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's true. They, uh, you know, they wanted to be laying down on the stairs reading upside down <laughs> or out on the trampoline, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. doing their lessons outside. Or, And I actually was okay with that because right. as long as they loved learning, right. I, I didn't mind, right. you know, how it got in the best <laughs> so how did you manage like meal times with so many kids like were the kids in charge of meals or snacks or like how did you keep your sanity to, well, we, like, we were feed pretty... them all day long because people <laughs> talk about that too like do I have to feed them all day long yeah we didn't feed all day long we you know we uh, we had a kind of a routine where we would wake up and at seven o'clock the whole family would come to the breakfast table because my husband is a photographer, videographer, and so he often would work evening events or right. weekends. And so during the week, he was usually home. So we, we began mornings with a family devotion okay. and reading the Bible, and then we'd have breakfast together. So okay. that was how our morning time started. And then we'd pray as a family, and then we did lunch, and right. my husband would come home from the office around 6 o'clock. And so we did dinner. Um, and it really varied. I mostly did a lot of the cooking, but, you know, my older kids would oftentimes help do chopping or yeah, um, preparing, the, mm -hmm, yeah. preparing the meal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And they do it according to, they kind of got more involved according to what they enjoy doing. I have one daughter who really, really loves making desserts. I mean, that's just kind of her thing. Right. So that's what she would gravitate towards contributing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and do I, did you have all the kids have to keep sanity, to keep the house straight? Like, did all your kids have chores? Or oh, yes. Like, um, oh, yes. We have, yeah. we have a chore chart. We still okay. have a chore chart. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are older, but we still have five at home. And uh, we have a chore chart. It, it doesn't always get done, 
but we do have a chore chart. So everybody has their responsibility. Right. They have their day of the week and we rotate it so that, you know, not one person's not always stuck cleaning the bathrooms, but. <laughs> right. I had a chore chart too, but mm -hmm. like I found that when my one daughter cleaned really well and my other daughter baked really well. So like I, the one that didn't clean very well, I didn't give her cleaning very often because I just didn't want to look at it after she was done. Oh, that's a good idea. So then I kind of made the one that did clean well, she used to complain because she was like, I'm always the one doing this. And I'm like, I know, but you're really good at it. So sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, we dealt with that too. So, so then that was like the, the negative was to just be comfortable in the, the, the daily use of the home. Cause a lot of times when you're at work and kids are all gone, then the home doesn't get used. So it doesn't really get messy, but that's not really true when you're homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Um, what is like the biggest blessing that you think that came out of, um, homeschooling? Well, the, the biggest <clears throat> blessing by far, um, and one of our major reasons for homeschooling is just, I could not imagine my kids going through a day without talking about how God related to it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, because Every subject that we studied, right. we studied in the light of the fact that it was our creator who Made devised it. and designed all of this. Right, absolutely. And so, by far, I think having my kids have a worldview that understands that God made it all. <laughs> right. And yeah. he, he will be the one that gives them their ideas and provides for them and leads and guides and directs them. Right. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. There was one time my one of my girls, she was taking the cushions off of the couch and stacking them up and then jumping on them. And she said, oh, look, Mom, look, I'm making the Tower of Babel. I said, oh, I don't think that's such a good idea, honey. You know how that ended did, up. I was going to say, did you read the rest of the story? <laughs> that, that didn't, didn't work out well. too well. Right. Yeah. But just that they would think to do that, you know, what they were relating in their minds. So, right. Yeah. I know I always said to the kids, the youngest especially, like, I'm so glad, glad that God gave you the gift of music. Like, one was super mm -hmm. good in music, one was super good with um, animals. I'm like, I always, mm. I never wanted to puff them up to the point of them thinking that they were great on their own. Like, yes, we all have gifts and talents and mm -hmm. we can be really successful and succeed at things, but um, it's because of God that we have these gift and talents. So yes. I always, you know, it was good to have them home to like reiterate that to mm -hmm. them. Like, Oh, I'm so glad God gifted you in the gift of music for you to bless other people or for you to bless your family or, you mm -hmm. know, make an income or whatever. So, that's... and then they can, they can <clears throat> spend a little bit more time going in depth into something. Like I have one son who just loves building and taking things apart right. and, putting things to like figuring out he's he has a very creative mind so you have and to tell him the joseph story which one the, <laughs> There's um, lots of the go-kart oh yes so I, um, this is how old is he at this point um he's probably 11 okay this 11. is an 11 year old that she's going to be talking about yeah. right now and this he, is like when they have the opportunity to run in the gifting that God has for them this is what <laughs> she's going to tell you this story about her 11 year old son and this is what they can do. Like, this is how their brains can work. So, go ahead. He really, really wanted a go-kart. But we were not about to get him a go-kart. <laughs> right. But he really wanted one. So, he scouted out what people were throwing away. Um, and he got an old office chair. He had a hoverboard he, that he had gotten from a friend. He got some metal pipes, and to this day, I really don't know exactly how he did it, but he took the bottom off of the office chair, he took this, you know, the same size metal pipes, and he ended up rigging it up on his hoverboard, attaching the office chair to it, and he he created, he made a go-kart. So there he is, up going up and down our street <laughs> on his homemade go-kart and um a couple of years after that some people he found two of those you know those atvs that people yeah. um 
have for little kids? Well, two people were, he had found two that people were getting rid of in their garbage. And so he brought them home. Neither one of them worked. Um, but he worked on them over the summer and he ended up putting, getting one put back together, but he also, it didn't go fast enough for him. So he used a motor from an old weed whacker, attached that, <laughs> and then decided, well, if I'm riding up and I really would like music. So he built speakers into it and then thought it'll be a lot more fun if it has an ignition. So he fashioned an ignition so that, and a key. So that he could, <laughs> isn't that crazy? Have his own that's ATV. crazy. <laughs> like that. That's how God has gifted him, and those gifts and talents. But that he has the time to to just think. You know, he's not sitting on video games, and he's he not outside you know, all the time yeah, working I remember on that. it. Yeah, he was <laughs> he was an outdoor kid for sure. Mm -hmm. So just like the fact that he had the ability to um, have the time, we need to let our kids be bored. Um, because out of boredom comes like all these great ideas like that's it's good for them to be bored when they say you're bored my mom always said well if you're bored then you're boring <laughs> um <laughs> thanks mom um yeah so just like I just was blown away with a story just because yeah. it's so cool that he would just think that way and that he would think to like build that at 11 years old. So like, what is he going to be able to do when he gets older? It's going to be pretty amazing to watch. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so do you have any like final, like just encouragement to, to homeschool that to maybe someone who's in homeschooling that just starting or thinking about doing it, thinks that they can't do it. Um, I know that I thought I couldn't be a homeschool mom cause I didn't think I was smart enough. Like yeah. what kind of encouragement do you have? I would just say that um, God didn't make a mistake giving your right. children you as their parent. Right. He chose the exact parent that he wanted them to have. Right. And you know your child more intimately than any other person. Right. You're with them. You study them. You know their strengths. You know maybe their areas where they're I don't even like to call them weaknesses, but areas where, you know, God is growing them. Right. Yeah. That's and the journey that you'll take will grow not only them to their fullest capacity, but it will grow you too. Yeah. <laughs> because sure. we're all we're all on that journey of learning, um, giving up some of the things we desire for others, for the benefit right. of others. Right. And, um, yeah, I, it was not always an easy journey for sure, but I wouldn't change it for anything. And I wouldn't, I yeah. wouldn't have chosen differently. I felt like I was a really bad student when I was growing up, but I really loved learning when I had to like read that mm -hmm. teacher's manual. Like you're a really good student. Like you're very academic uh, and know. very, um, smart. But I never was. And so, but when I homeschooled, I found that I actually liked learning. I was always very curious, but I actually liked learning when I learned the way that I am designed to learn and not just like sitting at a desk and doing mm -hmm. stuff. So I actually feel like I learned more in the 17 years I homeschooled than I did in all the years that I did like in school when I was a mm -hmm. kid because... I just wasn't learning the way that, you know, it was just very stifled. Right. Um, whereas learning at home with my kids gave me time to like discover different ways to learn things and absorb information. So, and it gives yeah. your children that too. Right. I mean, they, there's just a lot of freedom there. Right. Mm -hmm. And kids are naturally curious. If yeah. you give them the opportunity to learn, they want you can't stop them. You literally, you really can't stop right. them. Right, that's very because true. they're naturally curious. That's very true. Uh, I remember one summer. Every summer we have uh, snapping turtles that come and lay eggs on our property, and uh, this was early on in my my second son. So he was you know pretty young. He's like, Mom, look, the turtle is laying eggs out here. Like what? This was the first year we noticed it, and so we stopped doing whatever we were doing that day and we literally just 
watched the turtle lay eggs, counted how many. That's so fun. I know it sounds so silly, but no. but then we waited for them to be born. And we still have the video That's so of cool. when the babies were hatching. Their grandma came over that day and she oh noticed gosh, that the yeah. babies were coming up. And so we got out the video camera and we just sat there for the longest time just waiting for every baby to be that born. That's so cool. <laughs> Now that's science. That's it's, science. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fun. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So. Yeah. Just to get to share all those things with your kids is pretty amazing. And God will equip you to do it if that's what he's calling you to do. Yes. And um, so, yeah, I just hope that these videos are an encouragement to you. Thank you so much, Kathy, for, for jumping on. and Thanks just for going like, down memory lane with me. Yeah, this is I fun. know. <laughs> Giving a different perspective of just, you know, how to do it with bigger, you know, older uh, more children than um it's you know sometimes people are just homeschooling one or two and she did it with six and it was you know just a great blessing to their family so thank you all i would love it again for you to like share and subscribe and um really uh, pass it on if it's a blessing to you see you later